Just sitting under the tree. <laughs> Such a nice gift. Okay. Now, I'm doing, a, uh, we'll get into the announcements later, but I'm, uh, something very, very special I am doing for the month of August. You know, we're do, we've turned Wednesday night into classes, and uh, Lacey, how many were at uh, Pocket Full of Money class with Reverend Lacey back in the back row back there? Anyhow, how was it? Woo! Woo! Yes, absolutely wonderful. Well, I got one for you, kids. Back in 1954 at Camp Sierra, this before Selimar, Dr. Ernest Holmes decided to gather all of the practitioners and ministers together and give a in-depth class on spiritual mind treatment. This, fortunately, was transcribed and it became a wonderful uh, experience between the covers of a book and it is entitled Seminar Lectures. It is a masterpiece. It will enlighten you whether you are brand new to this or you're an advanced student. And so we're going to do it uh, every Wednesday night uh, in, uh, in August. I'll be starting this Wednesday. And we'll be exploring the principle of, uh, that is taught in seminar lectures. It is wonderful. If you'd like to be part of it, sign up over there so we can get a book for you. And if you, if you don't have a book, um, it's love offering only. And we're going to do, an, uh, I'm going to do an hour of uh, the material and, and teaching the class. And then we're going to do something all, um, some, all of you have been asking me to do. And that is we're going to do uh, an hour of the class and then a half hour of uh, healing mission at the end of it. So if you need anything in your life healed or you know someone that needs a healing, health, finances, career, whatever it is, bring them here Wednesday night and we're going to have a healing experience uh, that is based on, and what I'm doing is basing it on uh, and what Dr. Craig Carter. Part of the most powerful thing I ever experienced in religious science was Craig Carter's healing missions. And so uh, we've been doing it. How many have been to the ones we've done here and celebrate it? Is it worth your time? You got it. So be here Wednesday night and we're going to do it. Now let's go to seminar lectures for a minute. Dr. Holmes said in the seminar lecture, this is on page 62, and I'll kind of give you a preview of what we're going to do this month on Wednesdays this morning. He said, we would like to receive the divine giving, but are, are we willing to let go of everything that inhibits that givingness through us to others? Okay. Through us to others. You see, once you limit what you're giving to that which is outside of you, you're limiting it where? To yourself. Again, Dr. Holmes says you can't get out of the bag what isn't in it. <laughs> see, what is within you? Well, what's within you is infinite possibility ready to become form. They were, uh, I was quoting, we have visitors here, ministers uh, from the East Coast here that are on the way to their Asilomar this week. And we welcome you with love. Thank you for being here this morning. But the challenge we have, again, is to recognize, as they were pointing out, Dr. Bitzer, who said, you know, uh, a, a number of things about principle. One is don't forget principle even on special occasions. <laughs> and going back to Thomas Chord, everyone say principle is not bound by precedent. See, that's Thomas Chord. See, the way you've used mind up to now in your life is not the limit of what you can do with mind. And as I said in my talk in Chicago this week, is that it is not enough just to know about this teaching. I know people who've known about this for 30 years and their life hadn't changed an inch. Okay, they know about it. And they're settling for knowing about it. Okay, they're settling. How many would get in the airplane with somebody who knows about flying? <laughs> okay, they know at, they become a pilot because why? They get behind the, the stick and take off. Okay, with the understanding of how to do it, but then the flying itself produces what? A pilot. Okay, and the application of what we te teach produces the metaphysician. Not somebody who knows about metaphysics. The religious scientist. 
in action is someone who understands principle and then lives from the understanding, not just knows about the understanding. Now, if you are this morning in your life, if you're getting all the love and the money and the health and the happiness you desire, okay, I mean, if you're doing that, uh, then I celebrate what you're doing. But our challenge is, everybody say, and, I, and as I pointed out in Chicago and I point out here all the time, you know, Dr. Fenwick Holmes said to me, you have one thing to do as a religious science minister, and that is to wake everybody up who walks through your doors to the fact that they are greater than they think they are, always. Everyone say, I am greater than I think I am. <laughs> always. Now turn to the person next to you and say, you are greater than you think you are. <laughs> always now if you don't have what you want in your life maybe it's because you don't have the mental equivalent of it as your thinking process see we don't treat for things we treat to become the consciousness of the thing if you're just treating for the thing and you don't change consciousness all you're going to do is is create a new version of what you've always had if I be lifted up, everything around me will be lifted up. So we find ourselves doing what? Everyone say, I choose to be the mental equivalent of my highest desire in action. Now, if you let go and let that happen this morning, guess what? It will manifest in your life. There's nothing that can stop it. Nothing that can stop it. I love Reverend Celeste back there. She drew a picture of, uh, yes, what is it? What is it? Yes, the infinite in smiling repose. <laughs> yes, how many have you seen Celeste, the infinite in smiling repose? Yes. It's this very metaphysical experience with a hammock. <laughs> okay. And that's what Emerson said, it's lying within us, what, is smiling repose, ready to do what? Get our bloated nothingness out of the way. And what's your bloated nothingness? Your bloated nothingness is you saying I am and putting something limited after it. Because there's no limitation to you other than your belief that there's a limitation to you.